The Official Narrative on Ukraine The official narrative promoted by the entire Western political media class is that Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine in February of this year solely because he is evil and hates freedom. He wants to conquer as much of Europe as possible because he cannot stand free democracies, because he is another Adolf Hitler. The official narrative is that while Russia is in Ukraine solely because its leader is an evil monster like Hitler, the U.S. is in Ukraine solely because its leaders are righteous. The United States is providing arms, military intelligence, and assistance on the ground from CIA officers and special ops forces to Ukraine, as well as implementing an unprecedented regime of economic warfare against Russia, solely because the U.S. loves its good friends the Ukrainians and wants to protect their freedom and democracy. If you dispute any part of the official Ukraine narrative, you are an evil monster and a disinformation agent. Because Vladimir Putin is the same as Adolf Hitler, you are also the same as Neville Chamberlain, and are guilty of the cardinal sin of supporting appeasement. Because you are an evil disinformation agent, Neville Chamberlain, appeaser monster, it is legitimate to censor you. It is legitimate to accuse you of being secretly paid by the Russian government. It is legitimate to swarm you with coordinated astroturf trolls, working to shout you down and overwhelm you. It is legitimate to publish propagandistic smear pieces about you. All normal expectations of public discourse go out the window, because you are a monster, not a person. If you are tempted to ask questions which put a wobble on the official narrative, you must resist this urge at all cost. Don't ask why Western officials, scholars, and strategists have spent years warning that the actions of Western governments would lead to this war. Don't ask what people are talking about when they say the U.S. provoked this war, or when they say the U.S. is using this war to advance strategic agendas it has had in place for years, or when they suggest that these things might have something to do with why the U.S. is obstructing diplomatic solutions at every turn. If you ask questions like these, you are the worst person in the world. Per the official narrative, if you confront powerful lawmakers on their support for U.S. interventionism in Ukraine, you are parroting pro-Putin talking points and spreading Russian disinformation. Questioning officials of the most powerful government in the world about the most consequential decisions being made in the world is violence and is not allowed. If you claim you are objecting to the U.S. using proxy warfare in Ukraine on anti-war grounds, you are lying. You are not anti-war. You are only anti-war if you support the same positions on Ukraine as noted anti-war activists John Bolton, Bill Kristol, Tom Cotton, and Mike Pompeo. If you want to learn about the true anti-war position, consult reliable anti-war publications like the New York Times and the Washington Post. The official narrative on Ukraine is that the U.S. Empire and its media never lie or circulate propaganda about wars that the U.S. is involved in. If you dispute this, you are lying and circulating propaganda. That's why it's necessary to have so much censorship and organized trolling and mass media reports reminding you how good and righteous this war is. It's to protect you from lies and propaganda. If any part of the official narrative on Ukraine sounds suspicious to you, this means you have been infected by Russian disinformation. Do not breathe a word of the thoughts you've been thinking to anyone, or else you will be guilty of spreading Russian disinformation and will become an enemy of the free world. Remember, good citizen, we must oppose Russian propaganda at all costs to protect our Western values of free expression, free thought, free press, and free democracy. So do not question any part of the official Ukraine narrative. Or else.